Thank you very much, Steve. You know, these long, hot summer days may have taken a toll on all your annuals in your flower garden. We have a table full of great ideas for things you can plant now that'll give you color now and going on into the fall. We're delighted, as always, to have David Bates here from Bates Nursery and uh, Landscaping Center. How you doing? Meryl, I'm doing great. Appreciate you having me on this yeah. morning. Well, and we love it when you bring stuff that's just so beautiful, too. We're going to start down to the end with these purple cone flowers. A lot of us are familiar with those because I guess they're a native Tennessee plant. Is that right? Right. The echinacea is. And, of course, these are all hybridized varieties. And uh, there's probably no perennial that has been more widely hybridized than the cone flowers have over the last, particularly the last four or five years. Uh, the purple one here is called Little Magnus. Now, Magnus is one you've seen in the landscapes a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the downsides of it is it's so tall, it gets maybe three to three and a half feet in height. So it's a little tall for a lot of gardens. A little Magnus tops at around 30 to 36 inches, so it stays a little more within the bounds of most gardens. Mm -hmm. Great cut flower also, as are all these cone flowers. So you flowers. have five different cone flowers of different varieties right. here. The yellow one's We've really pretty. We've got a harvest moon here. It grows about the same height, uh, 24 to 30 inches. You've got this little double pink delight here in the front. You see it has the that. little double flowers on it that give you that little frilly look. That's very compact too. Very compact and it, those will only get to about 15 to 18 inches in height. Mm -hmm got meringue next. <laughs> they do a lot of uh, food names with many of these for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't I have no temptation to eat that, but I guess you so could. So that's meringue. This that's one's mer milkshake? This is milkshake. <laughs> and uh, there again, I guess it's uh, got a little caramel on top. I don't know why yeah. they call it milkshake. So these are all perennials. They'll bloom throughout the summer. Uh, yes. Okay, and then on into fall as the weather gets all cooler? All into fall, right. And the good thing about them is, is that if you've got sun, these are all going to be great choices. Uh, if you've got shade gardens, you need to be looking another direction. Is one of the real downfalls of shade gardens is that you just got to have sunlight yeah. to be able to get flowers on them. Yeah. All right. These are both beautiful, both the foliage and, and the flowers. And sedums are, are great. They're great in the ground. They're also great in planters uh, as they're very winter hardy. Uh, Vera Jameson's in the front. If you're looking for something that has colorful foliage and stays a bit lower, it will only get uh, maybe about a foot to 15 inches in height. Autumn Joy sedum in the back here will get on up a bit more, a couple of feet, also that wide. I love this phlox, particularly because it's right near my nose and it smells so good. It is a volcano purple, and uh, it is a, it's what they call a white eye. It does. If you look closely, you can see it has a little tinge, a ring of white around the uh, inside of the bloom there. So it's a. And this particular variety is has been shown to be quite mildew resistant. It's, it's one of the issues that uh, plagues all, many of the phloxes. The mildew is a problem, particularly with the humidity that we mm -hmm. have here during the summer. That's really nice. We have some dianthus down front. And this will bloom a good long time too. The frosty fire dianthus does great. It also also is a, a plant that's wonderful up in the front of a planter uh, planting area because it stays quite short, six inches. The blooms may spike on up as much as a foot and a half in height. I want to be sure we talk about this one uh, before we run out of time because this is so unusual. And you say you haven't had this oh, before this year. No, and it you know you got to wonder where names come from sometimes. This one is called Hot Lips Turtle Head, <laughs> and they must have thought long and hard about that one. I'm not. Sure sure how that they uh, they derive that name exactly but it uh, it has a, a, a beautiful flower spike on it and uh, it too is a has good mildew resistance and a nice foliage to give you a, a great background against those spike flowers that's nice I love this lantana down front too because it's not an annual I always thought they were just annuals this is perennial. That's right. yet that is a perennial lantana it will do well down to zero degrees uh, that is Chapel Hill the good thing about it miss Huff is another type that has a, a variety of colors on mm -hmm. the foliage uh, it gets really large. This one, however, stays fairly low, about two feet high, two to three feet wide. All right, I gotta ask you how things are going over at Bates, because I know you guys were really impacted by the flood. Yeah, we were not the exception. Uh, <laughs> there was a, we had a big time flood over there, and uh, uh, so we, we are uh, getting through it. It has been a, a pretty big cleanup effort. We were shut down for about a week, so. Um, and you lost a ton of inventory. We had a lot of things that, I, I guess they went to Ashland City, as best I can figure. They went <laughs> Somebody's down got beautiful flowers down river, river, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, congratulations for getting back up on your feet. And, and you know, we always want to support businesses that need a little help. Y you didn't ask me to say this, but I would encourage you, go on out to Bates Nursery on Whites Creek Pike. Help out a business that's recovering from the flood. You can find out a lot more about all the great things they have to offer there and all of his good advice, too, online at BatesNursery.com. Thanks so much. Thanks, Meryl. Appreciate it.